Hello everybody and welcome back to another spoiler review with me, a Border Prince. Today we are discussing Of Honor and Iron. Yeah, I forgot what it was called. So, this is a book by Ian St. Martin. I've read a couple of his things in the past. Generally good. Um, I will say straight off, I'm only going to give this like a, a six and a half, seven out of ten. Because what's in it is good. But it, I mean, it's, it's sort of sum up some of the problems I've got before we get into it. Um, and again, you know, as I've said before, I don't generally review books that I don't fucking like unless they've super enraged me. Um, generally try and, t try and stay quite positive. And I am quite positive about this book, but there are some problems with it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> now I'm, I'm going to give it a six and a half, seven out of ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's set in the, uh, the start of the Indomitus Crusade, which is a problem again, because that goes into the whole thing. Before we get into the story, let's just get this shit out of the way. I don't know why this book has been written. I don't know what Black Library are doing. I don't know what GW are doing. They're completely disjointed in terms of the law they're creating, the world they're building in this Dark Imperium setting. Started off okay. You know, you had the Dark Imperium novel come out. You had another novel come out discussing stuff that was going on in Imperium Nihilus. Uh, Devastation of Baal led into that period. You know, you had the rule book stuff come out, the codex stuff that came out, you know, all the stuff that's all spaced out. It was all reasonably well balanced and put together. Then they started releasing books that are weird in the timeline. Um, frustratingly so. So this one is set uh, just after Gilliman apparently returns to Ultramar and begins to induct Ultramarines into the, in, uh, Primaris into the Ultramarines. Right? Okay. So it's set just after the... <laughs> it's set just after that. Um, okay. So, again, no mention of Vigilus. No mention that, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> Calgar's become Primaris. Nothing like that. No mention of anything. I mean, it seems to me that he was commissioned to write a book and he's done the best he could do. And that's why it's a bit disjointed. That's why stuff doesn't quite make sense. Um, I don't want to say it was rushed, because I don't know. But it feels like the stuff rubbed with it. Now, in terms of actually the quality of the content, it's mostly good. There is one glaring fucking problem towards the end uh, of the whole thing. Which I won't get into super badly, but if you've read this book, or if you're going to read this book. Which I suggest you do, because it's not bad. Um, there's a whole thing with a Chaos Dreadnought. Uh, and two dudes, and two of the Primaris go and fight this Dreadnought, and then it, the story completely forgets that this Dreadnought's there, and then these two dudes, dudes pop up where all the other Primaris are. It's a bit off. And some of the characterizations are very strange, like in terms of, like the plot points are very odd, like why are they doing that? You know, you're like, well, why would they do that? Or why is that happening? Why have they done it like this? Why would you choose to do that? It's very strange, it's very peculiar. Uh, a lot of the characters we meet, we meet a lot of different characters who seem fucking great, who would be interesting to explore more, but they either die or he forgets that they exist. Or um, Primaris are the best things ever and they just kill everybody, which is frustrating. You know, this is why I think that he wasn't given a full briefing, which again points to the fact that Black Library aren't doing their fucking job and uh, doing this properly. You know, there's no one in charge properly keeping an eye on this. They're just churning these out, which is fine. The authors are doing what they can do, but there's contradictions and there's weirdness. Um, yeah, this is my problem. So, right, so what's the story? Right, first of all, we meet uh, Sergeant Theron and uh, what's his name, Helios, the chaplain? I'm super thought out, super well thought out. Now, before we go on, there are some moments that you want, you are going to enjoy. Good stuff that he's put in. That's clever, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's good for the law. But... Um, yeah, Helios, Chaplain Helios. We meet them on the planet of... Oh, God. <laughs> Where the fuck are they? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we get, we meet Gilliman. Gilliman's not changed into a Primaris. No mention of him being changed into a Primaris. Which, okay, you could say, well, it hasn't happened yet. But anyway... Um, Oh, no, we don't meet Gilliman. Oh, it's Marius Gage. That's it. Marius Gage. Who shows up later on. Right, so Marius... 
I'm going to keep it in order. I'm going to keep it in order. Where are they? Danny's. No? No, that's the wrong place. <laughs> oh, dear God. I'm not going to cut this out, though. No editing. No editing. No editing at all. No editing at all. Mito. Right. So it starts off with a flashback to Gilliman just after the uh, heresy uh, during the scouring over the world of Mito. Then we flash forward. Um, we meet uh, an, uh, an apothecary on another planet who's Genesis chapter, um, which is, a, you know, one of these chapters that got given a chunk of the 500 worlds, the garrison. Um, they're, you know, they were ultramarines that were turned into a chapter after the, after the uh, codex was brought in. Blah, 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 blah. Then we meet Helios. And we have an amazing scene where the Ultramarines gunned down a horde of orcs. Fucking great. Loved it. Brilliant. You know, they stood in ranks. Boom, 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 boom. Caning them off as they're coming out of a mountain pass. It's great. I loved it. Fantastic. Then Helios is given orders, secret orders, that no one's told about, except for him. Which it's like, well, why, why keep the secret? You know, it's, I don't know. Surely that goes against the Codex somewhat, yeah? Because the orders ain't that secret. But anyway, um... <laughs> he goes. He goes and meets. Uh, he goes and p collects another space marine, who he's supposed to meet. Um, so the Gilliman himself is giving him the chaplain these orders. He's to go and jump on a ship and go to this planet that's under the, that's controlled by the uh, Genesis chapter, and uh, he picks something up. Right. He goes and meets this Sergeant Theron, who isn't a Sergeant Theron. He's the last surviving member of a squad, and they only find this out when the Thunderhawk rolls up onto the uh, onto the ship, and uh, everybody's dead on there except for him. <clears throat> and um, he's now Sergeant, I guess, which all seems a bit against protocol. Like they're in, it just they're just like, okay, sound, we're going, okay, cool. Uh, you know, he seems caught up about the fact that all his mates are dead, but still, it's like. It surely doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, as we find out later, there's a whole ceremony of becoming a sergeant and shit. And this dude's just like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll put on my, my dead sergeant's helmet then and let's go. You know what I mean? It's these things that like, it rubs me the wrong way. Um, anyway, then they jump on the ship, they go to this planet. Now it turns out the planet has been uh, attacked by the Iron Warriors. And then we meet the Iron Warriors, which is great because the Iron Warriors characters are initially fantastic. But still, it's like, uh, okay, so the... <laughs> Right, so these two dudes are off to this planet, right? They're attacking this planet that's got a garrison of Genesis Marines on it, who, because, right, this used to be an Iron Warriors world, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell the whole story. This used to be an Iron Warriors world. It's called Corridim or something like that. Um, <laughs> the Ultramarines took it off them, right, um, after the end of the heresy, forced them off and they had to flee. Then, when the chap uh, Gilliman ordered that a garrison be placed on there because it was a, uh, a weapon stash of uh, the life eater virus, right? Now, apparently, in the forty-first millennium, the life eater virus doesn't appear to be manufactured anywhere because they go to a lot of effort to pick up eight missiles. Now, eight missiles, true, is eight dead worlds, and the reason behind this is because of the creation of the Great Rift, a lot of worlds are too corrupted to be saved or can't be saved. So, Gilliman is enacting a policy of, uh, you know, exterminatus on these, on frontier worlds. But only eight of them, which don't seem like a lot. It seems like a lot of effort to go to for this. But anyway, the Genesis, the Genesis uh, Marines don't know this. They just think they've been ordered to stand garrison there. And it doesn't at any point tell me how many are there. It doesn't go into detail. It just says the Genesis Marines have got some guys there and they're fighting against a, a chaos invasion. And it's like, well... That's annoying because they've taken a lot of losses here. You know, like it doesn't get explained. Um, there's a librarian there who's desperately trying to get a message out, saying that they're under attack, um, but they already know that they're uh, right. So that <laughs> the chaplain is going to investigate because the force of ultramarines has disappeared on route, which we don't hear about. All right, we don't hear about. We don't hear anything else about. Um, when they get into the system, they find that this planet is besieged by the Iron Warriors. The Iron Warriors have got a ship. Um, oh, and that's not even how, that's not even how stupid it gets. Um, the, right, it's not stupid, stupid, but it's stupid. Okay. <laughs> so these Iron Warriors are attacking this planet because, obviously, the guy, the, the, the warsmith there, he used to control it. He knows what's there. He wants that weapon. He wants them weapons, um, which is fair enough. But, like, 
his motivations are all a bit fucked up, but he wants these weapons. And he wants these weapons because his own sort of little domain that he built has been destroyed by the creation of the of the Sisistrix of the Great Rift. And, you know, he had this plan here, it was surrounded by fortresses and all this sort of stuff. Um, big fleets, big army of uh, Iron Warriors. He was a powerful warsmith, and then it all just got taken away from him. He managed to flee on this one battered warship that I've got, one mur- last remaining murder class ship, with whatever Iron Warriors he could cram in there. And uh, then he's like, well, okay, I've got to rebuild myself then. And they go to war, and they end up here, just by, like, coming out the warp and stuff. And they attack this place, which he used to be the commander of, he was the one who was leading the Iron Warriors forces who were forced to flee from this planet when the Ultramarines, when Gilliman came and attacked it. Right? We all on the same page. <laughs> okay, so. So. Instead of launching their entire forces upon this planet, which they need to take, and he's in pretty dire states, his ship's a mess as well. Um, they, uh, they decide to... Um, oh, it's got a there's, a... there's a Space Marine Destroyer. There's an Imperial Destroyer that belongs to the chapter in orbit as well, as part of the garrison force. Now, for some reason... We, we, right, so eventually when the Ultramarines... Oh, okay, we'll cover this in a minute. All right. <laughs> I'll cover this bit first. It, it's, you see what I mean? The fucking story's all over the place. Um, instead of taking over this ship and adding it to a new fleet and start rebuilding himself, right? He doesn't do that. He kills all the crew aboard it and launches a planetary invasion and then just leaves like a squad of troops on this ship doing nothing like they're not doing anything they've killed all the crew you know had some fun with them slashing them up and that but that's it they're just, the ship's just there floating derelict and it's like well why haven't you put some crew over there and taken the ship over like what the fuck are you playing at and why haven't you launched all of your forces onto the planet instead of throwing them in piecemeal against this space marine garrison that's dug in in fortresses that you built it's like the rationale ain't there. Instead, he's sitting on his ship, just chilling with his commanders, talking about how they're taking out these this this weak ass force down there. And it's like, well, things seem a bit. You're in a bit of a dangerous position here, mate. Do you not think you should probably go down there yourself with all these champions of chaos you've got and deal with the situation, so the Ultramarines don't turn up? <laughs> you know, like what the fuck? All right, so. <laughs> What happens when the uh, the chaplain and this his new space marine sergeant, who's an assault marine, which is important, um, they go onto this ship. They're to be met by further reinforcements, um, further ultramarine reinforcements. And what they meet is uh, a squad of Primaris. And immediately, which I thought was nice, right? Uh, the chaplain pulls his pistol out and the other guy does as well. Because they're like, what are you abominations? What the fuck are you? You're not space marines. What the fuck are you? Blah, 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 blah. And it's a nice moment where you see these two groups meeting. And the obvious problems with them. Uh, you know, the, the this fervent religious... And again, right, this is a thing. I've noticed... <sighs> I was always under the impression, which I think seems to have been lost in terms of the writing, uh, some of the writers... The Space Marines do not believe, and the Ultramarines have never believed, that the God Emperor is the God Emperor. He's the Emperor of Mankind. They do not believe he is a God Emperor. Some chapters do, some chapters don't. But the Ultramarines do not, because they adhere closely to the Codex, and they have the strongest link back to the pre-heresy days, because they're a first founding chapter. Gilliman was still alive in a stasis tomb, where they could all go and see. They had all these relics. Their, you know, The 500 Worlds was the most least scarred, chunk of the Imperium that held onto its history after the heresy and everything. You know what I mean? Like, they're not religious zealots in that sense. You know, like, in the sense that everybody else is. Um, whereas this chaplain seems to be, you know? Like, and the other guys seem to be. And it's like, well, well, that's not right. That's not what they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like, that's that seems to have been lost in terms of the law. Anyway, so you have this... That, taking that for granted... You have that moment and you have them meeting these uh, these Martian Primaris who've been brought up in the Imperial Truth, you know, trained in that way uh, for 10,000 years, blah, 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 blah. And you have them meeting. It's a nice moment. It's fun. It's entertaining. <clears throat> They're trying to explain themselves. What isn't fucking good is when the Assault Marine meets uh, two Inceptors. And um, Inceptors is the right one. Intercessors. I'm not too sure. The, the dudes with the jump packs. The primaries with the jump packs. They've sent two to be assigned to him. 
How they, I mean, oh God. He's an assault marine. He's an assault marine with all the assault marine stuff, normal assault marine stuff. These two dudes, instead of having three of them in the squad as is normal, they've been assigned to him as a sergeant. You understand? Like, it's weird. Um, <laughs> it's like, how's that going to work? They've got completely different thing set up, completely different armament. It doesn't make sense that they'd even consider doing that. He seems to have just rammed this character into this situation that doesn't quite make sense. Um, there's another fucking annoying thing. I'm, I feel like I'm doing an angry review. I'm not really. The book was enjoyable. It's just things when I was reading it, I was like, hang on, what the fuck? <laughs> you know? It's fine. It's just some things seem really off, which I don't think is down to him. It's down to the editorial staff of Black Library not doing their job properly. You know? Um, someone not running the shop, this whole Dark Imperium thing, and just letting it run wild, you know? It's frustrating. It's frustrating. <sighs> so, anyway, that's what we have with this thing. Um, Helios, the ship comes into the system, yeah? And they see that the, Nova, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the Genesis chapters, the Genesis Marines ship is floating adrift. Uh, Helios and the squad of Primaris go over to the uh, ship and, and board it. And they have a route around and they find all this, you know, dead bodies and stuff. And then they go into the engine room and for some reason there's some iron worries in there who decide to fight him. Uh, is, 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 it, <clears throat> is it the engine room? No, it's not the engine room. It's like some gallery or whatever. Fine. Great. You know, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this wounded murder class warship, which is a mess, you know what I mean? It's like, it's functioning and stuff, but it's heavily damaged. It needs work. That's why I know what they're doing here on this planet, you know, to get resources and, you know, to, to raid it and take it. Even though they haven't deployed all their troops to, to take out the garrison and stuff. Uh, they're on this ship. For some reason, the warsmith says, finds out that they're on this ship. The ship that he wasn't trying to capture, he just uh, left some men on there. I don't know what they were doing. And then, um, yeah, he says, uh, ram the ship. And it's like, that's going to damage your ship, mate. That's not a good idea. And that's what it does. It fucks up their ship even more. But he rams this ship, wasting it, for no reason. For no reason. <laughs> it's just like why would you do that so he comes through smashes it and you have a nice scene it's well put together where they're, they're fighting in this gallery and they can see the ship coming towards them both sides sort of shit are like shit uh, we gotta get out of here both sides flee and, and, and disengage and try and get out of there um, and then we have a moment where the primaris are trying to run and the one which I thought was nice one of the primaris turns around and says no you run I'll hold them off you run blah 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 and he charges in and blows himself up in a suicide squad manner and taking him out with a bunch of grenades and stuff. Um, <clears throat> and when, they're on, when they're on this ship going towards the planet, the other Primaris are like, his sacrifice will be remembered. And the chaplain's like, nah, he was a dickhead. He fucked up. He shouldn't have done that. He fought about only himself and his personal honour. We are one squad. You are one squad. You don't out operate as individuals. You operate as a squad. He put you all at risk. And there's going to be a time when you're fighting next where... His presence would have saved some one of your lives, and he's taking that away from you. He's betrayed you. You know, like it was a nice moment. It was talking. It was a nice moment. How we put together it was good. <clears throat> anyway, for some reason, we have a whole chapter in this book. It feels like a lot of padding out. To be honest, like there was stuff in there that wasn't completely necessary. There's a whole thing with the Nova Marines, which isn't really covered in detail. We have a we have three chapters with this. Um, Nova Marine uh, apothecary <laughs> fighting through the city and stuff meeting up with remnants of his squads and everything and it's like well I think he didn't go into detail because he didn't want to go into detail because it wouldn't quite make sense like the <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Iron Warriors haven't deployed enough men to conquer the planet, so this tiny garrison, which hasn't been given numbers, can sort of do stuff still in the story. You get me? Anyway. <laughs> uh, right, so... <laughs> it's all over the place. I'm trying to get it centred. Um, we have a nice moment where the Iron Warriors are going through the thing and uh, they go and find where the, the, the bombs should be. They're not there. But one of them has been... Uh, one of them accidentally uh, triggers one of the weapons and it gets sealed in this thing. While the other Iron Warriors flee through this big door that's closing, their leader, their sergeant, doesn't get out in time. Um, 
and he's stuck in this thing and they all say, start saying I am without I am you know they start saying their mantras and watching him as he um, bravely stands there and decomposes from the life eating virus but it was like we went to a lot of effort there of introducing these characters and this scene and then it's done we never hear from him again it's done but the most flagrant part of that which again on its own, as a short story, it would be fantastic, right? For some reason, so the ships are then uh, chasing each other. This big warship, it's wounded, it's damaged, it's chasing after this little slip of a ship, this little destroyer um, of the ultramarines, as it's it's evading them because it can't it can't match it, you know, tonnage for tonnage. It's outnumbered, outgunned, but the other ship's so fucked up, it's got no chance of catching it, really. Um, but it has got fighters. But the other one's got torpedoes. So they have a little bit of a duel. The Chaos ship launches fighters to intercept the torpedoes that are being fired towards it. Because they will do a lot of damage to their sh crippled ship. Which is why it's not a good idea to decide to ram another ship. But anyway. And that's all covered great. I love the, the description of that. Of how it, uh, <laughs> the ship gets even more fucked up as it rams through this other ship. Unnecessarily. You understand? Unnecessarily. It didn't need to, be, didn't need to happen. It was a bad move. From this... 10,000 year old warsmith. I mean, I understand he's been for a lot, but Jesus Christ, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't understand. <laughs> so, oh, okay. For some reason, we have a whole chapter describing this, okay? Um, there's a fight pilot, wakes up, it's a woman, she's got a finger around her neck, um, she hides it. I wonder if your flight suit, it's like a fucking claw or a bone or something like this. From the feral world that she was taken from by these guys, the Mechanicum, and then trained and augmented and turned into a fighter pilot. She gets an helmet put on her. She doesn't know any of the other crew. All she knows is their voices. <clears throat> they, you know, She gets plonked into a thing, welded into the, um, the ship, and launched out. Uh, it's mostly automated, but then she's given the controls at certain moments when the automation won't be enough. That's her life, right? And then, and so we're told that every time she comes back to the ship, she's drugged up again and put back into stasis until it's time to launch the fighters again. Nice, very dark mechanic and very grim dark, very nice. Anyway, goes on and on and on and on, uh, this fighting back and forth. <clears throat> Her ship gets hit. She uh, falls out the cockpit. She's got a flight suit on and everything, but she, you know, she's dying, she's dead. Anyway, she sees something. <gasps> it's, the, it's, it's her necklace. She grabs it. Like floating from another fighter that's been blown up. Um, <clears throat> she grabs it, but she's got hers on. Oh my God, they're identical. She sees the face of another pilot floating in space in the debris. Oh, it's her. Oh, you know, great moment. Fantastic. Well put together. Funny, entertaining, deep. You know, potentially had a great deal of stuff about it. Why was this in this book like this? You had a whole character there that you were building up and then you're just dead. Okay. That's, that's fine. I mean, you know, I like Game of Thrones as much as the next one, but like still, you know what I mean? At least there's, there's <laughs> you know, there's no point killing someone unless you've really got to know them. There's no impact there. And that's what, I don't know, man. I feel like this book should have been like a series of books. But anyway, that happens for some reason. I mean, it, it just feels really out of place, you know, disjointed. You know, there's lots of ideas in here that are really good, but they just aren't utilised properly. And that's the problem I got with it. So yeah, cool shit, but just misused. <laughs> I've just noticed I'm really blue. I've got like a lamp on. I just changed the light bulb today. Maybe that's affecting it. That's not normal. Anyway. <sighs> the battle unfolds upon the surface, right? A no second annoying thing, um, which kind of makes sense, but kind of doesn't at the same time. So, <laughs> the Inceptors... Launch themselves. Of course, they can launch themselves in their special armour orbitally and shoot down. But the Assault Marine can't, which again says to me, why the fuck would <clears throat> the Gilliman and the vaunted Ultramarines with all their tactical acumen, uh, tactical and strategic acumen, their adherence to the Codex of, you know, the best way to conduct war, why would they assign a sergeant who ain't got that special armour to this squad and require him to jump into a fucking uh, a little spaceship? <clears throat> uh, what the fuck they're called? One of them, not quite a Thunderhawk, but a smaller one. Why would they? Uh, why would they do that? Because like, so he's jumping and sat in his ship on his own, and he's got these two dudes outside floating down, and it's like, well, what's <laughs> that? Wasn't a good idea, was it? 
So they insert into orbit. They see a uh, Thunderhawk. This one Primaris is told not to go and attack it. But he does anyway. Because he's an Ultramarine. And that's what Ultramarines do all the time. For some reason. So he goes and attacks it with his plasma guns. Pew, 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 pew. Shoots into the cockpit. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> the guns don't track him. They don't fight him. They don't try and kill him. He manages to get there. He's flopping around. He's so fast. He's Primaris. He's so strong. So powerful. Primaris. 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 Do, you know, firing at it. It's got a whole fucking squad of raptors in it. You know, Chaos Space Marines, 10,000 year long war veterans jump out. Um, oh, they can't fight him. It's like they're, they're fucking like, <laughs> like level one uh, trash mobs against a fucking level 80. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <clears throat> so that all happens. Um, they manage to destroy this Thunderhawk. They manage to get down to the surface. Uh, they manage to, for some reason, these raptors there... They don't kill them all, they just stop attacking and disappear. And we never hear from them again in the story. Which you think would they would appear again. What with the whole thing of these, you know, you've got two groups of, of, <laughs> of jump pack troops, you know, jump troops. The one side disappears and we never hear from them again in the entire story. I'm serious. It's, uh, anyway. <laughs> it gets down to the planet, some shit happens, there's lots of city fighting. Um, eventually we get to, uh, the, they, they meet up all together, you know, um, on the surface. They meet the remaining troops who are defending this last holdout fortress. Um, <clears throat> the Genesis chapter are, uh, are there, there's a few, only a few of them left. We don't get told how many. Uh, <laughs> it's just the lack of details as well. That's what's frustrating. That's why I don't know, man. I don't know. Someone wasn't paying attention. I don't blame him. I blame the editorial stuff. This is stuff... And there's, there's glaring errors in here. Um, misspellings and stuff as well. Uh, but it's... it's The quality of the writing he's done... I can tell what's him and what isn't. And you can tell in these books. A lot of the books... The authors do the stuff. But it's the editorial stuff that really helps shape a story. Give it... You know, cut the chaff away. Make sure things make sense. All that stuff. Um... That just isn't here with this. I think they let him down. So, yeah, I don't blame him. I don't blame anyone in particular. I blame the process. Something's broke down in the process somewhere, and this has been allowed to get through the system. <sighs> so, yeah, that all happens. Anyway, the Ultramarines uh, decide to... Um, all right, so it turns out that the, the, <laughs> the Genesis Marines do know about the bombs. And... Uh, oh, yeah, right, okay, this is fucking weird. This is fucking weird, right? Oh, the old chaplain and the, Prima and the Primaris squad he's with, they encounter, they go searching for the, he's, he's on this mission, he hasn't told anyone what the mission is. They go and encounter a squad of Iron Warriors underground in the remnants of this hive city. Now, the planet's all being ripped apart. Uh, it's been like stripped bare of resources. It's got a lot of problems. It's, it's going to break apart eventually. The one remaining city on there, all the rest of the planet is deserted, really. Everybody lives in this one deserted hive city that's been through earthquakes and stuff. It's a mess. But the Iron Warrior stronghold bits still survive. But one of them's underneath the city now, for some reason, somehow, and still intact. I, but the other one's above, and it's like, well, as as that work? <laughs> like, I don't care how strong your wall is. Tectonic stuff like that, you know? <laughs> anyway. <sighs> they encounter this squad down there. They've got some kind of like uh, machine thing, you know? Um, and it's supposed to have where the information is on about the uh, where the, the virus bombs are. Because they've... So, you know, earlier in the story they had this thing and they went there and they weren't there because the Nova Marines had moved them. Uh, the... Genesis Marines have moved them because the librarian was getting visions of how powerful they are in his mind for some reason, right? <clears throat> and he's, he's desperately killing himself, trying to send psychic messages out uh, to the wider Imperium saying that this is happening, I guess. But, uh, yeah, instead of helping his mates... I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's fine. Makes sense. Um, it's more important to let people know, I guess. But anyway, this... Uh, I, I don't know what else to say now. So, yeah, they've moved them and they've hidden them on the North Pole. So, the Ultramarines, uh, just before the final assault of the Iron Warriors, 
they're like, okay, we're going to go. Um, and they're like, should we stay? You know, the Genesis Marines decide to stay and die. And it's like, well, why? Why would you do that? Surely it's better to survive and fight another day, you know? Like, you can't win this battle. I mean, it's all very noble, but, like, stupid and a waste of resources, particularly in this time of struggle. But they, they do. They ultramarines just leave these guys to die. And they run off, then, to the North Pole. But they don't get there in time, because the Iron Warriors have got there first. Um, and what ensues is the whole thing with the Dreadnoughts. And uh, <laughs> the whole thing with the Dreadnought that disappears. And uh, they have a fight in the middle of the... Um, in the, in this storage facility. <sighs> they have a fight in the storage facility, but there's no weapons allowed. It's all knives and combat weapons. Now, the Primaris are amazing and badass. And it doesn't matter that these uh, Iron Warriors are veterans of 10,000 years of war... Primaris are better, and they kill them all with no losses, except for the chaplain, who, um, yeah. <clears throat> In fact, uh, this is what annoyed me as well. Uh, he's right-hand man. There were others, but they've all seemed to have disappeared. Um, the, the Iron Warrior's right-hand man, like I say, he's got some others with him. He isn't told how many there are. They were in a Thunderhawk, so there could be, like, what, a few, 20, you know? <coughs> the one, the only other Iron Warrior that we've got named now, even though there were a few before, the only one we've got named now has um, got two power swords. Very cool, very nice. Um, one of the primaries grabs, catches one of them, and doesn't get his arm chopped off, and snaps it in half. Primaries are badass, man. Primaries are cool, really cool. Um, <laughs> and it kills this champion by slashing his knife, his throat open, with his combat knife. And it's like, well, that's fine, I guess. But fucking shit ending for the... You know, like... Uh, and uh, four of these guys... You have a bit of a lame moment where they're like... Uh, the, 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 right, so they've managed to kill all of these other Iron Warriors with no losses, with just knives, right? Uh, the chaplain gets the axe in his chest from the warsmith. A power axe in the chest. And that's what this guy... His Terminator armour, he's got, got a lightning claw, got an axe... 10,000 year old veteran, you know it, you know, badass. Um, four Primaris Marines, fresh from Mars, first real combat mission, got knives. You tell me who wins. You tell me who wins. Who do you think? That's right, fucking Primaris, because Primaris are awesome. Primaris are amazing. Primaris are the best thing ever. You need to go and buy some Primaris. It'll complete your life. They kill this dude, like, with knives. And it's like... It's not like completely ridiculous the way he's described it. They're hacking at his things and we, we, you know, ducking and diving, weaving around. But still, come on, man. You know, like you completely ruined the power level of these guys. To, you've reduced it. They're like, they're just like, there's no threat. <laughs> you know? I mean, I will say at least in that second one, that Shred of Darkness by Andy Clark, Primaris are dropping all over the place. The, the, the Alpha Legion squad that's in that thing, you know, they have a hard time killing the Primaris. They're surprised how sturdy and how they are. But they still fucking kill them because they're 10,000 year old veterans and they know what they're doing. <laughs> These Iron Warriors seem fucking ridiculously underpowered. Like, they killed the Lord with knives. Well, they didn't even kill him. They caused enough damage to him that he knocked over some shelves and got crumpled by them. And then, uh, all right, so then we have the whole thing with them finding the virus bombs. So Gilliman shows up. Um... I think this is where someone, an editor, would have gone, where's the Dreadnought? Okay, Gilliman shows up and pulls his magic uh, Emperor sword out and uh, kills the Dreadnought in one blow, you know, saving the day, right? Saving the Primaris from getting wiped out by this Dreadnought, right? Oh, yeah, that's it. Sergeant Theron dies. <laughs> the only people who die in... Oh, a couple of the Primaris get dropped. But, like, uh, that Sergeant Theron, we've been with him all the way through. We've had flashbacks of him thinking about his dead squad mates and what's led him to this position and stuff. And then uh, what happens? The Dreadnought rips him, uh, pulls him off the back of him, uh, crushes him a bit, then stomps on his leg, and then as he tries to fly off, shoots him. And he just dies. And the last words are, be better than us. There's some other bits about Primaris and we're going to get into. I've got some choice quotes. But uh, yeah, that's essentially it. Gilliman shows up. 
they get the virus bombs. One of the virus bombs is defective, has to be left behind. It's going to blow up eventually, he's told. And it's like... And instead of going, oh, we should probably get it off this planet and save all the remaining people on here so it doesn't get, like, you know, life-eated and turned into a dead rock that's no use to anyone at all. Even though the place is a bit fucked anyway. There's still, like, a lot of people living on this planet. A lot of civilians and stuff. But, um... A lot of people, you know, it's a whole planet. There's going to be people living all over the place in the wilderness and stuff. All the animals, all that, you know, all the life on this world. Gillum was just like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. We've got what we need. We'll just leave this one to go off. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> this is a Primark we're talking about, and Gilliman as well. He's just like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> let's just go. we got what we need. we got seven of them. Let's leave the other one here. Absolutely ridiculous. And then we have a whole moment, which I suppose is supposed to be great. You know, like, wow. But we don't know this character enough to care. This is the problem. We don't know this war Warsmith enough to care. And to be completely frank, he had the opportunity to flee. But instead, he was like, nah, I'm going to fake Gilliman. And none of these guys were like, um, it's probably a really bad idea, Chief. You know what I mean? We should probably get out of here while we still can. He didn't. He, stu he stayed there for some fucking bizarre reason. And he's like, dude... What do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to kill Gilliman? Do you really think that? I think one of them even says that, and yet he stays. It's like he's self-aware. <laughs> anyway, so he stood there, and then for some reason he's like, it's my victory. The, uh, the Ultramarines have gone. I managed to fight them off. Look, they're going. And then the bomb goes off behind him. And it's like, it just doesn't feel right, you know? So this planet all dies. Right? All their sacrifices for nothing. No bother, not even bothering to look for survivors or anything like this, in case any of these Stardis did survive or attempt to recover their gene seed or save any of the civilian population. Nah, fuck it, we're going. Bum, 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 I'm Gilliman. <sighs> you see what I mean? Problems. But there are some nice moments. Um, where are we? Where are we? This is the... Is this the one? Ah, okay, okay, okay. So we have the meeting, uh, and, a st <laughs> and I am worried. And this was a cool moment. Um, the heretic... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The last of the Iron Warriors struggled to rise as Helios approached. His bulky armour was festooned with warped tools of the Apothecarian, a broken bone saw grinding as it misfired and chewed at the outer casing of his gauntlet. He made the noise again as Helios made ready to execute him. It was an ugly sound, one that confused Helios as thoroughly as it enraged him. Why do you laugh? The heretic spat blood onto the ground. Not acid... I don't know. Um, he looked up at Helios, his dull amber eyes alight with defiance and dark amusement. Thunder warriors, he hissed. What? The pallid flesh of the Iron Warrior's face twisted in an obscene grin. That is a name that may mean nothing to you, but we who built your Imperium remember their faces. We remember the purges that were carried out when they were judged obsolete and cast aside by us, the Adeptus Astartes who overtook them. And now, behold... Your own replacements have come for you. The primary... Uh, the, uh, the Iron Warrior burbling from his lips with every word. If your precious corpse god will be bothered to carry out the death sentence... I wonder if your precious corpse god will be bothered to carry out the sentence himself as he did before. I think not. You speak only lies. The Chaos Space Marine laughed harder. I speak truth to a dog that was never trained by its masters to hear it. He choked out the words. History calls out for you to take your place in the dust and forgotten footnotes. The final days of your kind are upon you. Lambs being led to the slaughter. How long until you execute your... Tr uh, the Iron Warrior looked up at the Primaris Marines. How long until you execute your true orders and cut this wretch and his... <laughs> and his archaic ilk like the chaff they have become and call I oh, said call not cut um, <laughs> and yeah the chaplain kills him then um, yeah we get that moment there was another moment as well which I thought was nice like I, get, like I said there's, there's nothing the author has done, a, has done a great job creating scenes building stuff it's just it's mismanaged and it hasn't been edited properly that's my opinion um, as as someone who isn't a writer at all. That's my opinion, though. Uh, hold them as long as you can. You fight... 
Okay. The new um The other, so the Prime Minister is going to be angry and they want to answers from the chaplain because they don't know this. Uh, the chaplain answers, the records and, histor- and histories are fragmented, incomplete. You speak of a time before the Imperium when the Emperor took the first steps towards a, un- a united humanity by-, by retaking terror and then laid the foundations for the crusade that would retake the galaxy. To accomplish these first steps he needed an army, the Thunder Warriors. Our precursors, Halios nodded. I know little of them, almost nothing. They were crude, simplistic. They did not benefit from the greater resources available to the Emperor when he sired the Primarchs, our own father among them, and then the Legionis Astartes. They were replaced by your generation, the first of the Space Marines, the new taking the place of the old. The Emperor created them, said Helios. They were his to command. If he deemed that they would be replaced, as you say, or however they met their fate... If that was his will, then who are we to gainsay him? You feel that we have come for you in that way, then, as your replacements and executioner? No, no, I do not. Why? asked Nicanor. What makes you What makes you different than they? <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the, the chaplain's kind of like, you know, like, the chaplain should, should say, well, I don't know. But he doesn't say that. It's like the, the, the character isn't quite there, you know? Uh, there's some other moments that are pretty cool. Um, where is it? Where is it? It's nowhere. Okay, that's not that. <laughs> that's not that. That's not that, lads. Um, Oh yeah, we get this nice moment where the, so this this champion of chaos, <coughs> he's sort of here. He's it's like he's been built up to be a major character, but he hasn't. He's just been introduced to sort of a while ago, and then he pops up again. Um, you know, like the, there's no I don't know what you'd call it. The sort of the depth to these characters isn't there. You know, like they haven't been written strongly enough, um, or at least given enough of an introduction, enough of a reason for us to care about them. Because they seem pretty cool. You know, as a concept, this character looks good. Um, you will remember, Heli- uh, yeah, so the, the chaplain challenges this champion. And <laughs> the champion, he seems like a fucking geezer. Um, I do so enjoy the fervent ones, the fanatics, snickered Benier. To think that you have so ardently finished what Lorgar Zealot started. To hear the conviction, the fervour in your voice, the Urizen would have been proud to call you his sons. <laughs> oh no, I'm here to kill you, you skull faced puppet. I suppose we should do it. I suppose we should see to that. And then they have a nice scrap. Um, but then it's like he just gets killed. Uh, uh, someone grabs his power sword and snaps it. And then cuts his throat with a combat knife, even though he's got two swords. Uh, it's just like. Oh man, you know? It's it, like I say, I mean, this book's okay. I'd give it a 6.5, 7, round about there. But it is flawed. It's got some problems. Um, I would recommend reading it because it's fun. Uh, the I'm, you know, I'm within, I'm without. That's the best stuff. Uh, oh, the ending is pretty good as well. But it's really odd as well because Gilliman, for some reason, is talking to the bone. It's uh, talking to the skull and the bones of Marius Gage, which he's got, and he's carrying around with him, and he's just chatting to him. But he's talking about, you know, what am I willing to do? Basically, oh, we get a nice thing. We meet. Um, uh, Captain Numitor comes back, and Numitor, of course, uh, was promoted during the Tau, the Democles Gulf Crusade, and the stories around there, he's popped up in a few. Um, so it's nice to see him again. No mention of Sicarius, though, who's Gilliman's right hand man. Like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> no mention of the the custodies. You know, like, that's what I mean. It's, I, I think there's. I don't think he was given the support he needed to write this. That's what I think. I think something went wrong. Um, we don't have time for that. Uh, yeah, but basically he has a he has a chat with him. And um, <clears throat> apparently the Primaris's efforts on this planet uh, are enough that they've been deemed it's been deemed a good idea to introduce them completely to the Ultramarines chapter. Which is fine, because one way or another Gilliman's gonna do that, but still it's like there's no there's no question. Now widely more widely on the Primaris question. 
Here, it's quite explicitly put what's going to happen with the Primaris. They are going to replace them. You know, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's made clear that that's what's going to happen. That is not what they were saying when they did all the other law. Uh, the initial law, the initial Dark Imperium stuff. It wasn't quite like that. Um, Seth said it and so on, but they didn't make it explicit like that. You know, it was a bit more nuanced. I thought like there was going to be a lot of interesting stuff happening. But with judging by this, there ain't. <laughs> the explanation's pretty fucking spare, and uh, it's done now, so get on, get over it. And it's like, well, at this point, what was the point in even doing that? Because you're ruining something, you're ruining something that's essential, space marines. Because eventually, you're going to have to stop calling them Primaris space marines, and they'll just be space marines. Because that's the fucking, that's the, uh, that's the whole thing with 40k. You've got to have space marines. You don't call them Primaris Marines, because no one's going to know what the fuck Primaris is. You're going to carry on calling them Space Marines, unless it is purely a licensing thing. So they can call them Primaris Marines, and then they can copyright Primaris Marines, which they have, and then they don't have to, you know what I mean? Uh, then they get, because Space Marine is, is too generic, and has existed for far too long for them to be able to copyright it. You get me? Um, if that's the case, it's pretty fucking lame. <laughs> it's pretty fucking lame because everybody's going to keep calling them space marines you know like what even why even do that you know you, you ruin something that's fundamental to your your ip it, it's bizarre to me it's absolutely bizarre but um yeah the moment at the end is quite nice when gilliman's describing that he's you know he's he's happy to destroy worlds and stuff like this that's quite good but still it doesn't feel like the gilliman that we know now from guy haley's vision of things um it feels like a slightly different character. So it's like, well, why even do it like that? Why even include him as a, as a character? He just slipped him in at the end. And I don't, I'm not too sure why. And the Numitor thing, it's like, well, that's nice that you bring back Numitor, but still he's there for like a mini, a mini paragraph, you know? And he just promotes this Primaris to Sergeant and, you know, says, well, based on your performance, I guess we'll start bringing in all Primaris and start replacing normal Space Marines and stop making them and just make Primaris now on, from now on. Let's do that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's... Oh, there's, there's a lot of flaws. And, again, the law is such a fucking mess now. Um, I've tried to stay positive about it. But, you know, <clears throat> the writers can only do so much. And, uh, you know, a writer is nothing without his editor. So, you know what I mean? In St. Martin's done a decent job with the work, what, what he had. Uh, I'd recommend this. And if you want to get it, follow my links below. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's all right. I'd give it a 6 out of five, a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, it was okay. It's the least, I don't know, man. It was all right. I, it had interesting things in here, but it was just mismanaged, mis disjointed. There wasn't enough time do it, uh, to, to develop certain characters. The arc was a bit muddled. The actual plot was a bit muddled. Um, like, the, the whole centre of the book becomes very disjointed and weird. Like, ideas that were, were decent on... You know, like, an idea that sounds okay, and then it's just, it was misconceived. You know, like, it, it didn't slot together in, in an actual exciting story. Um, it was exciting, in parts, and then you had weird moments in between with jumping about from character to character when it's like well you, you could have been a bit more focused mate you know <sighs> so yeah there we go that's my that's my review of of, of honor and iron give it a go if you want <laughs> all right i'm gonna go uh thanks very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this i hope i've i'm being honest with you i'm giving my honest opinion of this book um i'm generally not going to be doing any sort of I'm not going to make a habit of this, of slagging off a book or anything like this. But if something's stupid, I'm going to say it's stupid, or at least in my opinion. And I'm going to give you my honest opinion. There's a couple of books that I've read this year that I thought was shit. <laughs> and I haven't mentioned them. <laughs> Although regular viewers may be aware of probably what I'm talking about. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I'm not going to do videos where I'm just, like, fucking spamming out on them. I don't think he's done anything wrong. I think he's been uh, let down by, um, you know, Black Library in general. And, uh, yeah. Bad editing and bad support in terms of the law. Um, so it's it sort of it falls down, you know. But they need to get their house in order. This is it's getting silly now. I mean, it's not, again, it's still salvageable. But if they carry on down this path, I don't know what they're fucking thinking, you know. 
might as well fucking read Halo fucking novelization novelizations at this point. <laughs> We're getting to that level, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go. Thanks very much for watching. I uh, I appreciate your continued support. If you'd like to give this video a like, I'd really appreciate that. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you want to let me know what you think in the comments below, that would be appreciated. And if you'd like to support my work, shill, 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 um, you can go down into the comments and that's really appreciated as well. It helps me buy books and games and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, thanks very much again and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. Cheers.